Hey guys, Dakota Cohen here from Cohen Farm. We're just out at our dugout doing some maintenance on our solar pump and I wanted to show you some of the aquaculture systems we've got going here. Let me just turn off this pump right now so it's, you can hear me a little better. So this was uh, something that I actually came across last year uh, when I was starting to, to get our, our pump going for the year. So this, this is the, the gravity pump or sorry, this is the solar pump that feeds our gravity system across our entire farm. 250 acres of land is is uh, is irrigated. Our livestock irrigated entirely from you know pump uh, water that's pumped from this one million gallon dugout up 110 feet uh, to our top dam, and then gravity fed across the farm. So, anyways, I was I was down at this uh, um, getting our pump going in here last year. And part of that maintenance is I have to, you know, put the, these suction lines in the water and, uh, and get them primed up. And I come back, you know, a couple weeks later and check it out. And what I found last year, and it's the same thing this year, is eggs. So these are eggs from some of the, the minnows that showed up in, in our dugouts just a couple years ago after, after we started building these. And uh, the, uh, if folks aren't familiar with, uh, uh, with what they look like, I've got a trap here. We'll see if we can get some of them out, out of the trap here and take a look at them. So these are, these are fathead minnows, also known as chubs or sh rosy shiners. And they're one of the most common bait fish in the world. And they're really common for, let's put these guys back in the water here. They're really common for, for a bunch of reasons. And uh, which is, you know, and they're the reason why we're, I'm so excited about the fact that I've got minnow eggs on, on our pipes here. So the reason that, that we're really excited about them is we've tried to get trout established in this dugout that we built a couple years ago. And uh, didn't have a lot of success. Uh, folks are familiar. Uh, Trout or rainbow trout are actually a non-native, genetically modified, uh, invasive species. <clears throat> and it's the only fish we can legally stock in dugouts in Alberta. And uh, funnily enough, it's, yeah, it's, it's the only species, species, species we, can, we can put in, but they're, they're not from here. They're genetically modified so that they're all uh, sterile. They put the eggs under extreme pressure, which causes a chromosome mutation, uh, which turns them all female so that they can't produce eggs because they're invasive, otherwise they'd take over. So, uh, and, but the other problem with, with these, these trout that we're having is, uh, is they're river fish. They're not meant to live in a dugout. They're meant to live, you know, up in the in, in you know mountain streams that are highly oxygenated, very clean water, and so you put them into a dugout, which and even though we've got, you know, you can see our windmill aeration system there, it's working. We went to great lengths to to try to create this habitat for these fish, and it just didn't work. Uh, you know, we had a lot of winter kill. Um, you know, they didn't produce very well. Uh, you know, and d despite all that, we actually, we put 200, 200 some fish in the first year and in a single season, we went from, you know, six inch fingerlings all the way up to uh, 12 inch fish with zero feed whatsoever. So they did still grow, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't perfect. And then, you know, it's so funny how, how, you know, nature will just kind of, if you, uh, if you have a good design, nature just takes hold and just does it better. Uh, for you. So we went to all this trouble to create, you know, all these aquaculture systems here and, and we've got, you know, floating dock systems and aeration and, and, you know, it's, it's really deep with, with steep sides so that, um, you know, herons and things can't get at them. But, uh, you know, the, the trout died after a couple of years and, and we just thought, well, what the heck with it. But then a couple of years later, we found these minnows started showing up. And so I thought, well, I should, I should check them out and see what, you know, what's going on there. And yeah, it turns out these, these minnows, the um, fathead minnows or the chubs, they are uh, one of the most prolific species of fish on the planet. A single female, so this is a female here. You can kind of see her belly is just a little bit swollen. Actually, no, sorry, that's wrong. This is a male. You can tell the males because they've got little nubs on their, on their nose. Um, fatheads. So, um, the, but the, the females around this time of year, they've got really big bellies. Here, here's a female. You can see she's got a really big distended belly. So that's because that's it's full, filled with eggs. A single female can lay over 10,000 eggs in a single growing season. 
And what's more is that those eggs, in 90 days, they can get up to two inches long. So it's the same size of fish that I just showed you, they can get that big in, in, in 90 days, three months. So basically you can produce sardines in three months. And here's the best part is that the, the minnows require no feed whatsoever. They're, they're omnivores, but they basically eat everything. They eat algae, they eat mosquito larvae, they're either bottom feeders, <clears throat> And they've got all these other amazing characteristics that make them just perfect for aquaculture. We're starting to use them for feed for our chickens. Uh, we've actually been eating them ourselves. They're delicious. You can eat the bones, everything, deep fried, fried in butter. They're, fa they're fantastic. And hopefully soon, one of the systems that we'd like to get going is, is the production of caviar. So I'd like to, you know, this really simple observation of the fact that the minnows like to lay eggs on the bottoms of pipes, which, you know, in, in natural systems, they actually lay their eggs on, uh, on the bottoms of rocks, underneath rocks, and so that's why these pipes work really well. So we've been playing around with a bunch of different systems, um, actually taking old plumbing pipes, cutting them up into little lengths, sticking them into boxes, but one of the things that we found that works actually really good is just taking these little, you know, old planter um, plant boxes and folding up one side, tying it open, and then just positioning them, positioning them in the water like this, and they just kind of float, and it creates this amazing habitat for these minnows. And if I come back in, you know, a couple days, the bottom of that thing will just be covered with minnow eggs. So, you know, who knows? We, we might not get into commercial production with this, but it's just, it's, it's absolutely amazing. If you look out at the water surface, every single one of those little ripples is a minnow. They just showed up here. It's just absolutely amazing that, you know, the if, if you create the conditions for life, things just explode. <clears throat> uh, if folks are, you know, interested in, in more of this, you can, uh, um, you can come check us out at our upcoming farm tour, June 22nd. Registrations is now open. Uh, you know, we just opened it last night. So head over to our website, www.cohenfarm.ca and uh, register for our free farm tour coming up on June 22nd. Hope to see you there. Bye.